Hello students and this is our lecture number 3 and today I am going to talk about the uh, concept of basic concept of classes and methods, the members of the classes. Uh, then I am going to move towards what is a constructor, uh, why do we use constructor and we move to the uh, overloading concept for overloading of uh, constructor and methods. So, and this is our lecture number 3. So first of all, uh, this is important. First of all, we need to know what is a class. Okay, uh, why do we use class? So class is basically a prototype, right? So a class is basically a prototype. Okay. So why you, we use that such kind of prototype to define a new data type so that okay we can use it for storing or for manipulating the data just like the structure but there is a difference between a structure and a class so uh, once we define a new data type which is of class type we can use n number of object to store our data or this uh, manipulated data so thus basically the uh, class whenever we define it it does not really exist it virtually exists okay which means that the memory is not be assigned, the memory will not be assigned whenever we create a class. But when we create the object of that class, memory will be allocated. Okay. So basically the class is a template for an object. So template means logical entity, whereas the object is the physical entity of that class. For example, uh, suppose we write a uh, class right suppose we write a class or we make a class of a student type where i want to store the uh, where I, I want to store the names of the student so string name right and i want to store the age also int age so for each and every student i want to create a class wherein i and i can store the name of the student and age of the student okay so when this is executed it does not actually, uh, the computer will not interpret this thing as a uh, memory has to be given for this student class. Okay? It is, it will just act as a uh, template, right? A memory will not be given to you, uh, to the uh, class. Okay? But when we create an object, so how do we generally create the object? By specifying the name of the class. So name of the class is a student. And say for example, S1 is the uh, object that I have uh, name object name that I have given over here uh, declare over here so that I can in the inside this object s1 I can store name and age so when this is executed when this is executed okay or uh, more specifically specifically if I have to talk about it's a new operator I have used and then name of the class with parenthesis so this is how I create the object of this class so now when computer interprets this, okay, it will not assign a memory to it, right? But when the computer interprets this, it will assign a memory for this variable and uh, assign that uh, memory to the variable S1. So for example, the string takes uh, 2 byte and the A uh, integer takes 4 byte as discussed in our previous session. Okay. So total 6 byte will be assigned to S1 object. So that is the concept of logical entity and physical entity. So the, since it doesn't really exist, so it will just act as a template. Whereas in contrast to class, uh, the object, object actually physically exists. Okay. And memory will be given to the object, not the template. So this is the, this is the basic uh, idea about the uh, classes and object. Now, what are the various uh, uh, members that a class can have? A class usually have uh, data members, okay? We call it as instance variable, we have discussed already, or, and the member functions. So these are the commonly used members of the class, but in addition to it, we have a constructor also, okay? So the constructor is basically used to uh, assign the assigns a default value whenever an object is created. For example, suppose you want to have a, whenever an object S1 is created, you want to have some name, uh, some value to the age and name. Maybe like you want to have uh, 
inside a you are going to have uh, zero value uh, and inside name you want to have null value then you can use the concept of constructor to initialize these variable with that predefined values whenever an object is created so that that concept can be accomplished with the help of the uh, constructor right and in addition to it we have a block okay we have an interface etc so all those things we will see in our upcoming session as of now we will see the first three data members member functions and uh, constructor you have to understand that data members uh, are also known as instance variable which we have already discussed so instance variable is a variable which is declared inside the class but outside the method or the member function so the, and the alternative name given to the member function is um, uh, functions okay functions or usually find functions so how do we create a class okay so a class is created with the help of the keyword followed by the name of the uh, class logical name should be given which we can understand or we can easily understand and inside the curly braces you need to specify the members as of now you can think of only constructor uh, data members or stands variable and member functions so for example uh, i want to declare a variable okay int x so this is an example of a uh, int x whenever i write int x inside the class it is an it becomes an example of an data member okay data member now i want i can even have inside the class i can even have the members okay member functions so for member function example would be um dsplay okay it will display something so the content the the definition or the implementation of this you can have it here or you can have it later on uh, as of now or we'll have it later on okay so, or you can have it here itself i'll just give you a idea uh, sop okay system dot object print ln so x so a very very simple definition so this is an example of member function right Another, the third one that I am talk, I was talking about is the constructor. Constructor. Okay. So, uh, a constructor is basically used to initialize the data members. Okay. So, how do we use it? So, a constructor is defined and declared in the way that I will be writing out here. So, a constructor is generally written with the name of the uh, have the name as the name of the class. So the name of the class is student. So the constructor name is also should be a student. Okay. Uh, okay. The constructor name is a student, and inside which I will have one or two code. As of now, say for example, I want to have some value. So I want to initialize in x zero or any other number one one zero whenever an object is created. So whenever an object is created, this will have some value. So this kind of constructor is known as a default constructor. The details about the constructor I'll discuss in upcoming slide. As of now, you just need to understand what is a data member, okay, or what are the various different kind of entity that we can have inside a class. We can have a data member, example in text, we can have a member function, example where display, or we can have a constructor. For initializing the data members or stack an instant variable like this. So constructor does not have return value. It is generally defined with the help of the name of the class. Since name of the class is student, so here we have declared the constructor as student class. And parenthesis can be empty, it can be filled. Okay, as of now it is empty. So if it is empty, which means that it is a default constructor. Okay. If it is filled with some data like int x, it is called Parameter in y, it is called as a, um, it is called as a parameterized construct. So those will be discussed later on. Okay, as of now, this much. So we we'll move to the slide. So, in addition to data members, in addition to um, uh, member functions, in addition to uh, constructor, we have blocks or uh, interface, etc. Okay. So as of now, three things will be sufficient for you to move around. So uh, this is the syntax that I already talked about it. Okay. 
So in this syntax, uh, there is a class keyword I've used and the name of the class instance variable or the data members and then followed by the member functions. So member functions have a return type. Okay, member functions have a return type. So the return type of this piece, void means null, can have int also and then followed by name of the method and then inside the parenthesis you can have the parameter list. Okay, depending upon the scenario. So this is an example. So there is a class called box wherein I have declared three instance variable or three data member with height and depth. And uh, I am assuming that it has got some value. Okay, we, maybe with the healthy constructor, but as of now I am not showing out here. So once we have some value, I am displaying it with the help of the member function. So in this member function, the return type is void, the name of the member function is volume, and parenthesis the parameter list is empty. Okay. So whatever is the width, height, and depth value that will be displayed with the help of this uh, class. Okay. So that is uh, all these things are logical information. Fine. Okay. So now, um, so this is a class example. A box can have a height, width, and depth. So you can just read it out here. Note, okay? A class declaration only creates a template. It does not create the actual object, which I already covered. Now, how do we make the existence, real time existence of this class box? Okay. So we can create an object. We can create the object of this box class with the help of the particular syntax. Uh, the syntax is name of the class followed by name of the object equal to symbol and new operator NEU is NEW is the uh, new keyword, is a keyword and the name of the class with the uh, parenthesis, right? So with the help of this, an object is created. Whenever an object is created, the memory will be given. So, um, Pictorial representation I would like to show you. Suppose you have a class, okay? you have a class called box and inside the box you have got three data members. Okay? So int, uh, height, width and depth. Okay? Int, height, width and depth. Assuming that int takes, uh, int takes four bytes. Okay? So when an object is created, okay, how do we create the object? So object is created with the help of the name of the class. So the name of the class is box and then object is ob. Say for example, I can take any variable name and new keyword and followed by the name of the uh, name of the class with parenthesis. Okay. So this is how I create the class. Okay. And this is how I create the object. Now, whenever computer execute this or compiler execute this, it doesn't make any sense. It will just, it will simply, it will uh, not make this happen into real time, okay? Uh, memory will not be given in short. But whenever, whenever this statement gets executed, what will happen? Memory will be given, okay? Memory will be given to H. Memory will be given to w and memory will be given to depth altogether okay address will be given to or will be mapped with ob so total 4 plus 4 plus 4 for 3 is 12 so total 12 byte of memory will be resolved by this ob object so that is done or that is accomplished when only when this is executed. So that is the basic idea about um, creating the object. Okay? Now, how do I access the members of the object? How do I access the member of the object uh, or the class with the help of the object? So I can access the members of the class with the help of the dot operator. Suppose, suppose I want to Suppose I want to uh, initialize some value in x with the help of the object. So I can take help of the dot operator. So how, what is the syntax? Syntax is name of the object. Since in this example, the name of the object is s1 space x equals to some value. 
provided provided it should be a particular section okay accessible section so as of now i am making it public i am not telling it did it the public private and all you all know in your junior semester classes so as of now public means you can access everything right in short so s1 can access all the data member provided it is public so s1 can access x so that's why i have access x out here for initializing so the main important out point out to be noted in this statement is that how i am accessing the members of the class so i am accessing the members of the class using the with the help of the dot uh, dot uh, okay operate dot operate with the help of the dot operator i am accessing the members of the class okay so this is how uh, you can access the data members of the class so now uh, as i although i have already uh, explained you how the memory will be allocated okay? so whenever you uh, create the object the object creation can be broken this statement can be broken in two steps okay first step is this much okay? it can be broken down into two steps first step is you simply declare the object and then s1 equals to this so this is this two steps is also uh, uh, will work okay this two step together will work it will work similar to this okay i have shown you in one statement you can even break down this statement into this statement now what happens when this statement gets executed when you execute this statement name of the class followed by the object variable a memory will be result and will point to now okay it does not point to any kind of member or any any data member that is there with box class okay. next when you do this my box equals to new box all the data member that was there or uh, that was associated with this box whatever is the uh, memory requirement if it is integer then 4 by 4 by 4 by all three together 12 by will be given to my box or will be associated with my box okay earlier it was pointing to now now it is pointing to uh, this memory block So this is the concept of um, the classes and the object. I have I have made clear. Next is the new operator. So we have basically taken help of the new operator to uh, create the uh, to assign the memory to the data member of the class. Okay. So it's the new operator who is responsible for allocating the memory for the data member of the uh, class. Okay. Or the object. So the advantage of this approach is that your program can create as many or as few as object during the run time okay or during the execution now uh, there is something called a uh, reference variable okay so that we are going to talk about with the help of this example so there is a class called box which i have got one data number w and there is another class that ref reference okay where we have the uh, main class public static void main and here you have created the object and the name of the object is b1 so when this statement gets executed executed uh, b1 will point to memory w okay i will recall it here now i will create another object b2 and that b2 will point to same memory okay so whatever b1 was holding that will be also assigned to b2 okay so to do that so i have written over here box and b1 okay so i can even break down this okay i like to show you the same thing with the help of the example suppose instead of this um, i have created the object as one okay now i will have another variable as to okay this S2 will act as a reference variable. Right now, it is not pointing to anyone. It is pointing to null. If you want this to this S2 to point to same data which S1 is pointing now, okay. if you want that, then what you can do is that S2 equals to S1. So S1 and S2 both will point to X. So diagrammatically, if you, if I have to show you, okay, it should be something. similar to this so this is s1 and this is s2 so when this uh, 
both all these three statement highlighted when exec gets executed so both will go into a same memory location that is x okay so this s2 in this example is known as reference variable so this s2 is known as a reference variable so that's what uh, it's discussed in this slide so the same example a similar example is over here so b1 is pointing to w with w is the integer now b2 we have created another reference variable in the one line only we have mentioned equal to b1 so you can break down this to two statement also but uh, it is of no use okay you can understand it uh, very well so when this statement gets executed okay it will point to we'll have a one more uh, object which will point into same memory location and when any one of when you use any one of the object to access it and remember to access the data member and assign some value it will get reflected in both okay so this is the concept of object reference variable so if you display it, b1.w or b2.w answer will come same okay that is five so that is the concept of uh, object reference variable so uh, this is an example of a very very uh, simple example where you have a class box three data members are there and one member function that which displays the values of width height and depth this is one class containing that okay we have another class in the same program where psvm is there main program is there wherein you have created two object my box one and my box two okay so you have a you have, cre you have created two uh, object of the same class okay so if i have to show you this in pictorial form it looks something similar to uh, this so you have a class called you have a class called box okay and you have created two objects uh, in shortcut i'll write box one and box two as b1 and b2 okay so b1 b1 and b2 okay whenever b1 was created uh, memory was given okay for height width and width depth so i'll just write it height width and depth Similarly, whenever uh, object B2 was created, okay, three memory was uh, appointed or uh, correlated or uh, uh, has been assigned to B2 for same uh, data member, but different memory locations. Okay, so because this object here, here I have not used the concept of object reference variable. Distinctly, I have created the object. Okay. For B1, box one, and distinctly I have created the object of B2. So separate memory will be given, right? So you can see over here, separate memory will be given because it has been distinctly created to new operator. You can see over here. Then in the first you have assigned in first uh, box one you have assigned 10, 20, and 15. So when uh, with the help of dot operator, with the help of the dot operator you have assigned 10, 20, and 15. When 10, 20, and 15 in the first box 10. Will be initialized over here. Twenty will be initialized over here, and thirty will be initialized over here. And similarly, uh, when in the second uh, object, my uh, box two, three, six, and nine will be assigned with the help of the dot operator. Three, six, and nine. So this is just a pictorial representation of what that is shown out here, and then display it. Okay, volume. So you will get the answer as ten into when this statement gets executed. My box one dot volume. So for this object, for this box one object, what is the value? For this object one, the value of height, width, and depth is 10, 20, 10, 30 respectively. So when you display the volume, this into this into this, that is 10 into 20 into 30, whatever is the answer, that will be get displayed by the first, uh, this statement, my box one dot volume. In case of my box two dot volume, what will happen? 3 into 6 into 9, whatever is the answer, that will get displayed. So I have I hope I have made it clear. So what is the meaning of object reference variable with respect to memory mapping? And whenever you create the object distinctly, if you have a different different new keyword, then how memory is assigned that has to be clear. Okay. Next is the example okay uh, of uh, classes and object with some parameters. Okay, so there is a class called rectangle. 
So length and for a rectangle, uh, the parameter associated it with it is length and width. Okay. And there is two member function. One is insert and the one is calculate. So insert, uh, insert is generally used to uh, read the data from the or uh, get the data from the user and then supply to supply the same value to the instance variable. Okay, and then um, this another value is another function, a member function is used to calculate the area of the area of the uh, rectangle. Okay, so uh, this is another class uh, main class. So whenever you create the object R1, okay, R1, whenever you create the object R1, memory will be given to length and width for R1 only. Another another object is R2 is created, another memory will be given to length and width with uh, for R2. So when you insert this uh, 11 and 15, okay, for R1, it will go into R1 memory location. 3 and 15 will go to separate memory location. Okay, although the variable name is same, but uh, the object is different. Okay. And when you calculate the area, so you will be different. Okay. So, so that's it. Okay. So whenever you create the object, now whenever you create the object, you can assume uh, you can assume the concept similar to this. So you have created the object R1. Okay. So whenever you create the object, two memory will be given to it. Uh, length and breadth. Whenever you create the other object R2, okay, another memory will be given to it for L and for breadth. And whenever you invoke the insert function, that is this function, you will be supplying two parameters 11 and 15 for R1, which will go in L and W respectively. 11, 11 will go to L, 5 will go to W. Okay, so 11 will go to L. Okay, and five will go to B of R1. Similarly, three and fifteen will go. Three and fifteen will go. Okay. So when you display, uh, when you uh, display the uh, uh, this is one case executed, which says you have to display the value of length into it. So whenever R1 dot calculate will be in, is invoked. So 11 in, into 5, it adds 55 will be displayed. Similarly, 3 into uh, 3 into 50, 45 will be displayed. Okay, so that is that will be the output of this. Okay. Now coming to the point constructor. So the constructor is basically used to initialize the uh, members whenever an object is created. So it has the same name. The property of the constructor is that it has the same name as that of the class. Okay, and everything you see it doesn't have written value. It's written somewhere else. Okay, once defined, the construct is automatically invoked. So basically, one when you define the uh, when you define the constructor, it will be automatically invoked. You need not uh, you need not uh, specifically mention over here like uh, ob dot uh, ob dot. Um, suppose the construct over here is stu d stu d and Okay, so you have the construct over here and you have some statement. So whenever you want to invoke this constructor, you need not explicitly write. Okay, whenever you create the object, that time automatically invoked, it will be invoked. So that is the main concept of the constructor. So once defined, the constructor is automatically uh, uh, called okay, at the time of object creation and after uh, and before the new operator completes. Okay, the constructor looks very little distant because they do not have return type, not even void. Okay, so this is because the implicit return type of the class constructor is class itself. So that's why you, you need not have the constructor. So there are two different kinds of constructor. So I think I should be explaining this with the help of the um, example. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so we have a class called student wherein I want to store the, uh, I want to store the value of int x comma y. Okay. And display it. So I want to have a constructor student constructor. I want to have it where in, in the student constructor my code will be say for example x equals to zero and y equals to zero. Similarly, uh, I will have one more constructor okay of another type student with some uh, parameter in, in a and in b 
which I will further use it for initializing the instance variable that is in x I want to store a and in y I want to store b okay and I want to uh, display it okay I want to display it so for display I will have a member function void dist so dsp says that sop so I will um, have a value of a sorry x and I will have the value of okay so this is my scenario of the class wherein I have got two instance variable x and y two, two kind of constructor I use it this kind of constructor where there is uh, no parameter this kind of constructor is called um, default constructor and this kind of constructor where we have where we have some parameter in the construct is known as a param, uh, parameterized constructor right so now i can have one more kind okay i can have one more kind say for example i have one more variable z okay so i'll have for z also over here some zero value I have similar kind of parameterized constructor but different from the one that I have already created it. So this is another one which have got three um, parameters. Okay. So z equals to c. Right. So say for example now I have got the main function. Okay. Inside I have got another class called I just so I, I, I will have another class called M, main class, where I have got the uh, PSVM, okay, where string address is there, and finally, um, the object creation. So for this class, student, I am going to create the object. Okay? So when I create the object using already discussed uh, syntax, that is, uh, name of the class, so ob1 okay new operator and student so when this statement gets executed where you have not given any uh, you have not written inside this parenthesis so what will happen it will invoke it will invoke default constructor but if i uh, create the object similarly if i create the object instead of this I create the object using the syntax wherein I supply two values 5 and 10 okay wherein 5 will go okay if I do this okay it will invoke which constructor the constructor with two arguments so it will just try to check over here so here parameter is not matching here the number of parameter is 2 so here also whenever you have created the object will be 2 the number of parameter is 2 so it is matching with this so best possible match is this so it will invoke this okay now it will even check over here also there are three parameters but at the time of creation only two so obviously the best possible match is this so obviously it will be invoking this constructor highlighted okay. now if i uh, similarly if i uh, create the third object ob3 okay, with three parameter First, it will check here. Okay, it is not matching. Again, it will check here. There are two parameters, but I am asking for, uh, I am looking for three parameter, three parameterized constructor. It's not matching over here. Again, it will check over here. Okay, yeah, it is matching over here. So it will invoke uh, this. For this object OB3, it will invoke this. So you can see whenever I have created the object, okay, it will check what kind of constructor that the user have written it. Based on the requirement, the best possible match will be created. Okay, so now here you need to uh, understand a concept of overloading. Okay, so overloading means you have the same information. You can see over. I'll just highlight this one. You have the same information. The only difference out here is that the in constructor, in constructor, or uh, in constructor overloading. Only difference you have it is the name, uh, the number of parameter 
is different. It may have also happen that the type of parameter is also can be changed. Like for example, suppose I have got the, the similar similar three parameter, three parameter, right? Three parameter, three parameter, but the last parameter is low. The last parameter is low. So now what kind of data you are supplying? 15 or 15.5. If it is 15, then it will invoke this because all three are in this. If, if it is 15.5, then it will invoke, it will use this. So these vary, okay, vary the invocation by changing the type of parameter or the number of parameter. This concept is known as a constructor overloading. I repeat, it's example of the constructor overloading. So what is a constructor overloading? Constructor overloading is a, a method of uh, initializing the data member of the class by varying the number of argument and type of the data at the time of object creation. So this is an example of the uh, default uh, parameterized constructor. So just a recap of it. So the constructor that have got no parameter is known as a default constructor. So whenever an object, if, whenever you have earlier, okay, earlier we did not have in this example. If you see this, any of the previous example, uh, yeah, in this example you have not seen any kind of the uh, default parameter. But automatically and internally it will invoke the default parameter even if you don't write it. If you write it, okay, if you, whenever you mention the, uh, whenever you mention the parameter, is, at that time you need to have the default parameter. That is mandatory. Whenever you are trying to have the parameter, so you need to. Uh, mandatory write on the uh, default one also. But whenever we are not writing anything, default is automatically invoked. Okay, so uh, that's a default constructor. If there is no constructor in the class, compiler automatically invokes the default constructor. Right now, coming to the point, parameters that have the parameter as constructor, or constructor that have the parameter. Okay, so uh, this is an example I've already discussed. There is a class called box. The this is a constructor. I can easily make it out. This is a constructor because it does not have written value. And the name of the name of the the, the name of the um, this block is name of the class. So from this, I can also easily make it out that it is the constructor. Okay. So so that's all for in case of default constructor. Now coming to the point parameterize. So here there I use two constructor box with one parameter and box with uh, uh, three parameter. I have not written the default constructor in order to save this space over here so whenever an object is created with three parameter it will invoke this whenever an object is created with one it will invoke this okay so here i am showing the example of i can on i can also save the um, object as a parameter not only data directly okay i can even save the object as parameter Okay, and now coming to the point method overloading. So method uh, constructor overloading, I will really talk method overloading is also similar to it. Here you can method overloading is the concept of uh, uh, is the concept of programming concept where we have same name uh, where we have different function with the same name. I repeat where we have the different function with the same name, okay, but different parameter is defined. Okay. For example. Okay. For example, suppose uh, I have a class called a student. Okay, I have a class called a student, and inside the student, I have got some values. Here, for example, int x comma y, int x comma y. Okay. Uh, okay, and with the help of constructor, it has some value. Okay, I am assuming I am not writing that part. Okay. So I will have a function first. So uh, first function is void. Okay, sum. Okay, void sum. I will add one more x y z. Okay. Void sum int a comma b int b. Okay. So and it has got some definition. Say for example, definition. I make it simple. Okay, S O P. Okay. So you have to give me x plus. Sorry. I have one more statement. I have one more statement, uh, x equals to a and uh, y equals to b and then result SOP will be uh, x plus y, okay, Sum, summation, okay, so I hope I made it here, 
So this is one function. I'll have the similar function. Okay, I'll replicate the same function, but I will def I will keep the return type same, the name of the function same, but I'll change the parameter. This I'll have one more um, parameter in C. Z equals to C, and it will return me x plus y plus x plus y plus z, right? So you can see over here, the name of the function is same as that of this. Okay, the return type is also same, only differs in the number of argument. You can even overload the method by changing the type. Also. Here you can you can have two integer. Here you can have two float. Okay, so like that we also you can even overload the. So now why do we study this method overloading? Method overloading is generally studied to achieve polymorphism concept and you all know that polymorphism is one of the concept of object oriented programming so um, this is an example where you can see there is a classroom okay where uh, there are some uh, okay i'll take uh, i'll write down the example okay so there is a main class okay psvm wherein i will create the object okay so i will not have this Simplicity. So I imagine that it takes some value. Okay, say for example in five, uh, ten, and uh, fifteen. Okay, fifteen. Okay. So whenever I create the object, stubnt. Okay, ob one equals to new. Okay, new. Um, New STU being student, then after that I will have uh, okay. Let us not assign it also. So I'll assign it in the main function itself. So ob one dot a okay. Okay, 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 okay. Or, or what I can do is that ob1 dot sum sum and inside I am changing two parameter 5 and 6. Okay, and sometimes I can even say it, I can create the other object, I can create the other object, and then name of the object I mean changing it, and instead of 2, I will say there 5, 6, 1. So when this statement gets it, you see, the, you are invoking the, uh, I can even use the one operator, okay, big problem, okay. So, but when this statement gets executed, which function it will invoke, this or this, okay. So you have to have two, param two parameter, so it will select that function which have got two parameter, even the type also will be changed. Okay. Similarly, when you invoke this sum with three parameter, instead of this, it will invoke this because it is matching with this. So that is the basic concept of uh, method overloading. Okay. So method overloading is generally used to achieve polymorphism concept. We can overload the method by changing the uh, by changing the type of argument and the count of parameter is. Uh, in method ordering, the property is the name of the function should be same and return type should be same. Uh, remaining parameter you can change it. Even the definition also you can change it. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, that's all for today's session. I hope uh, I made it clear. If there is any question, you can please post it up. Thank you. Thank you so much.